My name is Steve May, and I am the uh, director of the Mariners Memorial Foundation. I was sitting in my office in Washington, D.C. I opened the Washington Post, and I saw a letter that uh, the president had uh, written to the Texas Tower Association. And um, I called information and got the name, telephone number of Don, and I called him. And I told him who I was, and I told him what we wanted to do. And um, he took down my name and uh, the, the website, Mariners Memorial Newport org. He called me back the next day. Steve, uh, I uh, got a little problem. And I said, well, what's that, Don? I told you we, we take care of you, these 32 people. He says, we, we got another 50. <laughs> I'd like to thank Mr. Abbott for sending me an email so that I could get up here for this because it means a lot to me. My name is John Loftus. I'm a retired tech sergeant. I was stationed at Otis Air Force Base at the time of the loss of all three airplanes. I will read a summary of each of the uh, aircrafts and the numbers, uh, names of the crew members. At 18.30 Eastern Daylight Saving Times on the 11th of July, 1965, the aircraft commander of crew number 27 briefed an air crew of 19 for an active air defense mission to Air Station 2, Homie 63, an EC 121H, serial number 550136, was assigned by Wing Operations Center. Fuel load 6,600 gallons. The DD form filed by the aircraft commander listed 11, 11 hours and 30 minutes fuel on board. Estimated time was 920 and 745 on station at flight level 15,000 feet. At 2222 Eastern Daylight Saving Times, Homie 63 ditched within two miles either side of a line formed by a graphical coordinates of 41 degrees 45 minutes north, 47 degrees 37 minutes west, and 41 degrees 43 minutes north, 67 degrees 41 minutes west. Touchdown on the water was very hard. The aircraft broke apart in two places in the fuselage with at least partial wing separation. Forward brake was in the latrine galley area, and the rear brake was at the APS-103, the height finder station area. Aboard of the 19 people, there were three survivors and 16 perished. Those that did not, those that perished, Thomas Fielder, Murray J. Brody, Edward N. Anacara, Gilbert T. Armstrong, Raymond M. Walsham, John L. Howard, Charles K. Sawyer, Frederick H. Ambrosia, Ira J. Hussock, Michael J. Barbula, and Eugene J. Schrovegel, Francis J. Griffin, George R. West, William E. Hal, and Charles H. Williams. The second aircraft was scheduled for a flight 10th of November 1966. Major Baird, aircraft commander, assigned to the 961st Airborne Early Warning and Control Squadron, Otis Air Force Base, Massachusetts, briefed an air crew totaling 19 for an active air defense mission to Airborne Long Range Input Station 2, Homie 64, an EC-121H, serial number 555262, was assigned by the 551st AEWC Wings Operations Center. Fuel load was 7,330 gallons. The DD form listed a flight plan piled by the aircraft commander 12 plus hours of fuel on board, estimated time en route 9 hours and 50 minutes, with 8 hours and 5 minutes on station 2 at 15,000 feet. At approximately 0120, an ops normal reported 15,000 feet over station 2 was called into the SAGE Center. At 126 Eastern Standard Time, an aircraft later identified as HOMI 64 by the first mate of fishing vessel, Stephen R., passing overhead at approximately 200 feet in the northeast by due north direction. The aircraft appeared to be in level flight, navigation lights on, and emitting smoke or a vapor trail. 
Two miles beyond the Stephen R., the aircraft pressed, passed directly over the fishing vessel Terra Nova at an estimated altitude of 150 feet, wings level, red and green navigation lights on, and engine or engines backfiring. Engine noise to be a minimum, which gave them the impression the aircraft was small in size. The aircraft continued to pass Terra Nova for approximately three quarters to a mile, struck the water at 127 Eastern Standard Time, and explosion and fire resulted. All 19 people were deceased. Those on board, Aircraft 262, Robert A. Baird, Larry D. Rucker, Armand D. De Bonaventura, John J. Nerd. Nerdlick, Arthur J. Lambert, James R. Prater, Robert Sparks, James D. Rogers, Roger P. K., James D. Wilbur, Edward W. Taylor, Richard K. Hoppy, Clarence Henderson, Robert A. Theob Theobado, Lawrence McNeil, Robert J. Simmons. Third aircraft. At 7.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on April the 25th, 1967, EC-121H, serial number 530549, crashed and was destroyed one mile south of the western tip of Nantucket Island, Massachusetts. Of the 16 crew members aboard aircraft 15 were fatality, fatalities. One of the two navigators aboard survived, sustaining major in, injuries. Those on board lost in this aircraft, Larry Stoner, James P. Lyle, Robert R. Ferguson II, Frank W. Gardner Jr., Richard D. Bearden, Theodore LaPointe Jr., Richard Gravely, Danny R. Burden, Dennis R. Cole, who was on his first flight ever, Howard K. N. Franklin, Robert E. Mulhern, Gordon D. Hammond, Robert J. Clapper, William M. Walsh, my next door neighbor, Dennis E. Boyle, William N. Cook, the first aircraft, the three survivors were First Lieutenant Bruce E. Witcher, a navigator. The enlisted survivors were John N. Propolo, a radar operator. The radar technician that survived, David A. Searles, who three months later was my instructor for flying. The survivor of the fourth, third airplane was also a navigator was Lieutenant Colonel Gannett, Gannett, who's still alive and well in Florida and comes to many of the reunions. Thank you very much and may all these men rest in peace. They are my brothers, all of them, whether they were on the Texas Tower or on the aircraft. Thank you. We are proud, this association is proud to have the names of these people out here because these are true heroes. These are people who were pr protecting the coastline of the United States during the Cold War. And I think uh, they're unsung heroes. And um, we are very, very proud to have these names out here. I thank you, United States Coast Guard. And I'd like to give, like, have everybody give them an applaud for, for what they did here today. Thank you, Coast Guard.